Hello Chipmunk and Chipette fans, my name is Grandy Tamayas, and before I begin, I would just like to remind you that I have a Discord server for this channel. Life has been keeping me pretty busy, so uploads are going to be slightly farther apart than usual, but I'll set aside more time to work on larger video projects like an Alvin and the Chipmunks retrospective, or finally branching out into something beyond the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise. So the Discord server will be a good way for me to engage with you all in between uploads, and you can get some sneak peeks at what's to come for the future of this channel. Link to it is in the description. Now, on to today's Alvin and the Chipmunks podcast style elaboration. Today's topic being, why is there not as much Alvin and the Chipmunks merchandise these days as there used to be? Alright, so if you've been following my videos for a while, you may know that I have talked about a lot of individual categories of Alvin and the Chipmunks merchandise from music albums to home media releases of the cartoons and toys, as well as ancillary media like comics and video games, etc. In all of those instances, I have talked about the potential these things would have in the market if more of them were produced and widely distributed, as well as the obstacles standing in the way of that. At the moment, I can't think of any other categories of merchandise that warrant an entire video, so I decided to make this one to possibly conclude the sub-series of elaborations. Well, okay, I've also had the idea of doing an elaboration about whether Ross Bagdasarian Jr. and or Janice Carmen should write an autobiography about their experiences working on the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise, but you all can debate whether you think that would be considered merchandise since it kind of falls closer to my Ross Bagdasarian Sr. biopic elaboration, which you should definitely check out if you haven't, but I'm getting off track. This time, I want to focus on the lack of all these kinds of Alvin and the Chipmunks themed products in general by going further into things from the perspective of Bagdasarian Productions, or at least my educated guess on how they see the merchandising of the brand. But first, I want to establish just how big the market for Alvin and the Chipmunks merchandise used to be. Going back to the 1960s series, there was a card game, lunch containers, greeting cards, and comics, as I already covered. There were a lot of other things for the first generation as well, but it all pales in comparison to the second generation in the 1980s, which had a line of plush dolls and small posable figures from Ideal, a ceiling fan, a telephone, storybooks with read-along cassettes, puzzles, a board game, a stage playset, bedsheets, t-shirts, shoes, dishware, and there was even a tie-in with Burger King for the release of the Chipmunk Adventure. Now yes, the movies and 2015 series have, or should I say, had, a lot of these kinds of items too, but to a much lesser extent, like between the 80s Ideal figure line and the 2015 Fisher-Price figure line, the only notable plastic figures of the Chipmunks and Chipettes were probably in the McDonald's Happy Meal toys for the second and third movies. Those had little to no articulation, and most of them had different gimmicks or phrases for the ones that were electronic. Today, you can find those pretty cheap on eBay, whereas the ideal figures can sometimes run for $100 or more unopened in package. Speaking of the ideal figures, there was even one for Uncle Harry, who only appeared in four episodes of the 80s cartoon series, and it remains the only figure, articulated or not, of a chipmunk character other than the chipmunks or the chipettes in the entire franchise. And it looks like it's going to keep that title if the twin trends of no non-main chipmunk characters and limited amount of modern merchandise continue. So yeah, the 80s series line had a lot of pieces of standout merch. But let's forget about the past. The question still remains why merchandise for Alvin and the Chipmunks has been so scant now in the 21st century. I already talked about the 2,000 copies of Little Alvin and the Minimunks and the cancelled items from the 2015 series Fisher-Price toy line, and even if you could say that there is a substantial amount of merchandise for the current series, a large amount of it is just so insignificant that it doesn't matter, like a pack of stickers or a blind bag pack of teeny tiny figures that's only sold in one specific retailer in another country. Those kinds of things are pretty distant from the licensed toy line of Fisher-Price. And in my elaboration about the toys, I did mention how a large licensed toy line could end a series if it stops being lucrative. But I think licensing is only part of the issue. I think some of it can also be attributed to Bagdasarian Productions themselves. To give you another example, and paraphrasing a friend of mine, Jim Henson had similar concerns with merchandising the Muppets or having them endorse products because he didn't want kids to just have their parents buy things willy-nilly just because of familiar characters on their TV screens. But at the same time, he did realize that there was a market for Muppet merchandise, 
and that it would bring money back to his organization in the form of kickbacks. So whatever merchandise was made had to be approved by him personally so that it would maintain quality and integrity of the characters. And I think something like this has always been in Bagdasarian's goals. They're very protective of the rights of the characters and intellectual property, most notably with the Universal Studios lawsuit, which I already did a video on. And Ross and Janice have mentioned in interviews like the How I Built This podcast with Guy Raz how they've turned down big offers before. And I think they've also been subliminally hiding it within the themes of the shows and perhaps more evidently in the movies. Take, for example, the 2007 movie, where Ian Hawke mentions talking dolls, cologne, and wine coolers as products that would make a lot of money with the Chipmunks brand name on them. And it even continues into Chipwrecked, where he mentions tribute albums and pay-per-view funerals as ways to make money off of their success even after they're hypothetically gone. From this, Ian is likely representing how companies think more merchandise is better for a brand and that bigger is better, even though it isn't always that way for the people who have the idea and make the success in the first place. And even for products that are closer related to the core of their business, such as music or the cartoons themselves, they choose not to expand too much to the point where there is a demand that they can't keep up with. Because of how involved Ross, Janice, Vanessa, and Michael are with the creative process, doing a large amount of the writing on the show, the voices, the directing, on top of their normal lives, they don't have time to oversee the production of much ancillary content. If this were like most other franchises, Bagdus Hearing could just license the brand out to other companies that could make products or ancillary media for them. But they aren't very trusting of creative input coming from outside sources, especially when decisions for that input are made by a company out of the need to sell more merchandise for the sake of profit rather than specific people who really understand what Alvin and the Chipmunks stands for. Because like I said, to maintain the integrity of the characters and the way they are portrayed, the Bagdasarian family wants to be there every step of the way in case someone slips up and, for example, makes it seem like Alvin would say something he normally wouldn't. And I can understand that. They understand the characters better than anyone since they are the family that created them. So I think that answers the question of this video's title. But I also want to address whether there is some compromise that can be made where companies can have some freedom if given the license to make chipmunk products and Bagdasarian can put their trust in something that's not likely to harm the integrity of the brand. Toys are likely out of the question. People, especially kids, tend to form attachments to toys of characters they love, and if that toy is not up to a certain standard, it may not give a kid the kind of experience that will make them feel happy about playing with their favorite character. So, I think the future of Alvin and the Chipmunks in toy form is probably going to be similar, if not less, than what we got with the Fisher-Price 2015 series toy line. However, I think Alvin and the Chipmunks products like bedroom decor, a jigsaw puzzle, or school supplies including stickers and erasers wouldn't hurt to produce in much greater quantities and market more extensively. I think the 2015 series already has most or all of those things, but I've never seen them at mass retail. I do actually have an Alvin pencil pouch with my name on it, but I had to order that online. And those kinds of things would be pretty easy to produce. They can just print on the same character promotional artwork for the series we've been seeing everywhere else, and then they can patent it, they package it, they slap it on a plastic lunchbox, and they sell it. Sell it. Okay, sorry for the Jurassic Park reference. And yeah, I know it sounds kind of cheap to use the same promotional images, but really, it's just not practical to create unique renders for every single thing, so reuse of images is necessary as evident from the more upfront, highly merchandisable franchises. But yeah, like I said, in the 80s, there was even a ceiling fan, and since when has the integrity of a cartoon brand ever been harmed by a ceiling fan? Unless you didn't fasten it properly and it falls on you when you're sleeping, which would be ouch. Granted, those are much bigger investments, so I wouldn't expect those to be made for the 2015 series, but any product that's less subject to radical opinions or impact on people than the things I've already done videos on would seem less, I guess, consequential. And now that I think about it, toothbrushes would be another product that probably wouldn't harm the integrity of Alvin and the Chipmunks much, and I don't think there were any chipmunk-themed toothbrushes for the movies or even the 80s series, correct me if I'm wrong. Plus, it's always good image for a brand if they promote dental hygiene. Ian Hawke's idea of Alvin and the Chipmunks wine coolers probably wouldn't work even in the movies universe. 
In the real world, I'm sure that Alvin and the Chipmunks would not want to be associated with alcoholic beverages. Anyway, I could go on, but I don't want to be here rambling about individual pieces of merchandise forever. I think you all get the gist of why Bagdasarian wouldn't want to uh, merchandise the Chipmunks to the same extent as they used to in the 80s and 90s. Over the last two decades, they've just grown more cautious about the image of the brand and want to keep their creative control of it, lest they run the risk of corporations using it as a tool to make something that ends up being a cash grab for them. Sure, Bagdasarian would receive a portion of that money, but it's hard to undo the damage if something they don't give final approval to ends up causing a change in how the public sees the characters. Of course, this could open up other arguments for how, or even if, they could make any sort of compromise, but I would like to hear all of your thoughts on it, either in the comments or on the Discord server. Don't forget that you're also welcome to leave a like and subscribe. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this elaboration, have a nice day, and thank you for your time.